is on and Russia just doesn't want to know. What do we do? Do we let them starve and die where they are? Yep, For God's okay. Sakes, what do we do? I'll put, I'll put um, uh, th that point uh, to Duncan Boulevard in just a moment, Steve. Many thanks for calling. Uh, Paul's on the line from London now. Paul, what have you got to say? Yeah, hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, pretty much backing up what uh, your last caller just said, but also to add that uh, I, I don't see that they will send in troops uh, purely because there's too many political reputations at stake. Uh, we've also got to bear in mind the fact that these guys have been fighting a war over there for 10 years. They're vastly experienced, they know the area. Are our troops really experienced enough to go in there um, to, to get the people out? Uh, I don't think we are, and I think that if we do send troops in there, uh, we will come unstuck. And I think that's what a lot of the politicians in NATO are looking at, the fact that in theory, yes, we should go in, um, we should save these people, but from a practical point of view, um, and from a politician's reputation point of view, it's unlikely that they will do that. Right, OK, Paul, uh, we'll deal with that point uh, soon as well. I want to hear now from uh, Gavin, uh, who's joining us on the line from Andover. Gavin, good morning, it's your call now. H hello. Um, hello. I think that Europe should go in without America, because if we take America with us, America will end up attacking their own people more than likely. And while we're sitting around waiting for America to decide, innocent people are getting killed and I don't think we should stand around and let that happen anymore. When you say America will end up attacking their own people, you think the Americans are a bit clumsy when they go it's into like battle? like the Gulf War. They'll, they'll attack their own tanks by accident. All right, Gavin. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, let's just pick up on the two uh, earlier points uh, with Duncan uh, Boulevard. What about a, a predominantly European force, Duncan, with the Americans going in uh, as a support operation and perhaps to sweep up uh, once the main battle has been done? Yes, again, I mean, it is feasible. It, it, it is perfectly uh, imaginable that a European ground force should go in with American logistic or perhaps air support as well. I have to stress again that there is no consensus within Europe to actually go down that, ru that route. Let us say for one moment that the British Army was twice its current size and the British Army could find enough uh, equipment and personnel to do this on their own, perhaps supported by France, who, who is the only other na European nation at the moment who's really um, on for any form of, of land operation. Let's just say that was feasible. Okay, uh, we, we deal with, with the land operation. We, we retake, effectively, uh, for the Albanian population of Kosovo, the majority of, of Kosovo, certainly enough to get refugees moving back home. Um, the American involvement would have to be there just to, to, to tie NATO together. We would have achieved something, but what we, what we would have failed to achieve is consensus within Europe. Now, I, you know, isn't I'm there a danger, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but isn't there a danger as this bombing campaign can carries on and gets nowhere, apparently, that uh, gradually the consensus that exists at the moment will break up. I mean, we, we know that the Greeks are wavering. Well, indeed. In fact, the, the Greeks have, are not just wavering. They, they haven't really been overly impressed with what's been going on since the start. The point is, do you want to end up with a situation where we have achieved our aim in Kosovo, but, but have achieved disunity uh, within Europe for the long term? Or do we want to come out of this uh, with, with a Europe which is committed to NATO, which ties in the United States of America to NATO for the future, a NATO actually that is, that is fit to operate I in such a manner in the future, or we just do we want to deal with, with the situation in hand? Now that is a very tough decision to make, and it is a decision unfortunately which does not necessarily appeal to, to the, to the uh, emotions and, and the facts on the ground today. Now that sounds awfully harsh, but unless we take a regional view, unless we take a long-term view in the Balkans, just solving the Kosovo situation is, is going to solve the Kosovo situation and nothing more at this stage. And could, could open up splits that uh, aren't there at the moment. Uh, OK, Duncan, thanks for that. Let's hear now from uh, Mayor, who is on the line. Uh, no, Trevor, I think, from uh, Birmingham. Trevor? Hello, hello Frank. Uh, yeah, hello, Trevor. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I think, I think we should go in for our own self-esteem. And I don't mean that as, as a joke or anything. America started this with us, and I think America should go in as well. But listening to the politicians in America, they've just said, they've, they've saying that Tony Blair took his troops to the front. Well, it doesn't look as though American public opinion will allow uh, America to go in. Clinton will not be allowed by the people of America to go ahead with a ground war. But, that, but, but surely if they've got the voice to open up and start the bombing with Britain and, and NATO, surely that we should, we should be dependent on them 
to send some of their troops in as well. Lot, a big difference uh, between bombing from 15,000 feet and uh, going in in foreign territory against an extremely uh, stubborn and well-trained army. So why start the war in the first place if you can't back it up? Well, you talk about self-esteem, but what, we don't fight wars for self-esteem, do we? Self-esteem, what I meant by that, Frank, I don't mean that in any nasty way. What I meant right. was, we've started it. We have actually, we started it with America and the rest of NATO. It seems to me that it's always Britain and America getting slayed off. Everything you pick up, it's America and it's Britain, even in our own parliament. Why have you done this? Why have you done that? There is 19 other nations, there's 36 other nations backing us, so why is there this split? Why is it that we're dependent upon America? If we get all the let's go in, sort it out and come out. OK. Uh, Trevor, many thanks for those uh, comments. Uh, now to Romford, and on the line from there is Mayor. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning, sir. Uh, hello. Uh, yes, hello, we can hear you. Can you put your point, please, to the program? Yes, uh, uh, I think uh, my personal view, and I've got some uh, military ex experience, without America, nothing can be done nothing at all and then from the first day they had to put the ground troops i want to ask a question to the uh, defense uh, expert Indeed. in iraq when the whole world invade iraq what happened nothing without ground troops nothing can be done there must be ground troop another point should britain lead europe in vision yes but it won't succeed with a lot of government is going to fall down because of internal problems Without America, nothing can be done. Okay, How many uh, British uh, planes are there in the, in, the, in, the, in the air? Right, well, you're moving on to an, another area, and America, of course, are leading the uh, air campaign and uh, could continue that. Even if a European force uh, went in, the Americans could give uh, considerable support from the air. Uh, at that point, uh, uh, Duncan Bullivant, uh, about... Uh, uh, you Absolutely know, clear about that. But... The reliance on air power alone, um, and we don't want to go over this too much because I think every, every expert in the world has had their say on this, was never going to achieve the aim. There was a fundamental um, failure in judgment, an assumption that Milosevic would cave in after a few days of bombing. That hasn't happened. There was never a consensus to send in ground troops, be it individual nations, be it individual um, alliances or agencies in a non-permissive environment. And if for one moment, um, reading the press, we, are, we should draw the conclusion that Britain is proposing that Britain goes it alone at the moment, forget it. It is not an option at, at this stage because we as a nation don't have enough uh, to contribute. We don't have the manpower or the equipment to do this on our own. It has to be within a consensus for practical purposes. And from your call, our question today, in order to capture uh, Kosovo and return the refugees, should Europe go it alone, with America apparently reluctant to enter into a ground war? Uh, my guest, Duncan Bullivant, strategist with uh, years of experience uh, in the Balkans for the UN and the OSCE. Plenty lined up on the phone to talk to me, but first of all, uh, the emails today. And uh, I picked out five from our selection, starting with John in Germany who says, uh, as an American uh, service member in Germany, I think the politicians in Washington have made it quite clear it's political suicide to commit U.S. ground troops in Kosovo. The only answer would be a European ground force with American air support. The clock is ticking for the remaining Kosovars. Uh, Dei in Poland, or Deji, uh, the banana war should teach Europe that the Americans can and will turn on their traditional allies whenever it's in their interest to do so. Kosovo is primarily a European problem. Europeans should take the diplomatic and military initiatives to resolve this crisis. Uh, Vivian, closer to home in West Sussex, I think Europe should go it alone. The USA has no right to say what does or does not happen in Europe. The USA must learn it can't control the world. The only reason uh, America doesn't use ground troops is because they're afraid. Uh, Mike from the United Arab Emirates. The remaining civilians in Kosovo must be helped now, says Mike. This can only be achieved on the ground. 